In wartime, an underwater soldier has few advantages. His only defense is a naked blade. His offensive strength, a tightly packed bundle of explosives. My name is Mike Nelson, and diving is my business. I'd been retained by a small Latin American country to train a cadre of underwater demolition experts. But you don't learn UDT in a day. Underwater, none of the ordinary combat rules apply, particularly working with explosives. The measure of safety is a shaved second. Inexperience can mean the difference between a ripe old age and a chilly grave. We got far enough from the shock wave not to be killed, but we were still shaken up by it. This was only practice, but just around the corner of time was a moment when our little lessons would pay a dividend in liberty or death. Any combat unit is only as effective as its human components. Out of the 20 men that I'd started with, I wound up with only two who were capable of passing on to others the knowledge they'd acquired. Tomas Vilekis, age 26. University of Princeton, wealthy family. Good diver, very quick to learn. On the surface, you wouldn't want a better man to work with. But under that aristocratic poise ran a stubborn streak. Paul Ramirez, age 28, called Indio. Orphan since birth. High school education padded by a healthy curiosity and some years in the service. If you had to pick a word to characterize Indio, it would be happy. He had a capacity for fun. But when the chips were down, he could be as serious as a starving barracuda. There were things about this job that I didn't like, but there were also compensations. If I could see these two men, despite their natural antagonism toward each other, develop into a crack demolition team, I'd call it a very good job. I'm not with seven. You're beat. I got two. You're as bad as that plutocrat Villegas. Just me, huh? <laughs> there was tension on my boat, all right, but it was nothing compared to the tension that was generating ashore in the capital. Revolution. Yes, Mr. President. Revolution. You do not care for the word, huh? You may very well be forced to live with it. Serrano, please, I have a guest. I am not concerned with propriety. My voice is the voice of the people. And it cries out against the injustice of your administration. Control yourself, Cesario. The only injustice that concerns you is the fact that I sit behind this desk and you do not. I warn you. If you sign the school tax bill into law, the people will erupt. Children must be educated whether their fathers approve or not. But beyond this, and until you sit where I sit, any law that passes will do so without the benefit of your recommendation. Oh, well, that may be sooner than you think. I leave you now with your mercenary. Oh, Mr. Nelson, I should like to remind you of the history of your own country. The British hired soldiers also. But they lost the war to your own ragged farmers. Oh, I don't think that's a very good simile. Of course it isn't. Serrano, please leave. You try my patience. The patience of my people is tried by your taxation. Buenos dias, Mr. Presidente. Oh, is that lovely character? Cesario Serrano. He leads the strongest opposition party. Oh, he sure wants your job. And I got a feeling that he's going to try to get it, too, one way or another. Ah, oh, do not worry, Mr. Nelson. The Saronistas are strong, 
But that lacked the necessary votes to win an election. Oh, I don't mean he's going to try to get it by an election. You mean his threats? I was a soldier. My personal popularity with the armed forces forestalls any thought of revolt. Now, shall we go on with your report? Uh, well, as I was saying, before uh, the little dictator bust him in here, everything's coming along fine. And uh, these men, are they capable of instructing others? Well, if they're not, you're wasting your money on it. Mr. President, uh, I'm kind of concerned about this, uh, this character, Serrano. He busted out here like he was going to stir up a revolution. You instruct my divers, Mr. Nelson. I would restrain the fiery Serrano. Huh? The President wasn't the only one with some restraining to do. I still had my hands full with my two students. The training went on. It began to look more like the real thing every day. Maybe the boys were just reflecting the high feeling all over the tiny country. Serrano was whipping up a storm about the school tax. Indio and Tomas never talked politics. But the way they went after each other on the water, boy, oh boy. like that once more I'll cut your throat <laughs> we're not playing marbles blue blood you remember what I say huh I remember cut off my hair do that again your father's money won't do you no good that worries you eh? nothing worries me I'm just a happy-go-lucky payo like Serrano a man of the people hey, hey take it easy take it easy break it up yeah break it up with you two anyway. What's the trouble? The usual Mike, I guess. He resents my background. Well, maybe it's his own he resents. There's mess developing in town. You think that Indio has any connection with Serrano? Think he belongs to the party or anything? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, he was in the army himself. You two are going to be working together as a team. You've got to learn to get along with one another. I'm sorry, Mike. All right. I'll do what I can. That's what you should do. Mike, would it be all right if I, uh, I went ashore tonight? There's the loveliest senorita I met. Oh, no, not again. Well, you're really a glutton for punishment, aren't you? <laughs> How many girls do you want to date in one week, anyway? How many you got? Oh. <laughs> Dawn came up clean and crisp next morning, and with it, trouble. Immediately. Well, what's the matter? The president, he has been abducted. Serrano holds him captive even now. The colonel laid it out for us. Serrano had made his move in the only way possible. A squad of picked men had captured the president and taken him to a fortress on an island about four miles offshore. Any attempt to save him would result in President Duran's death. And that, Mr. Nelson, is why I come to you. If a plane flies overhead or a boat gets too close, our beloved president is a dead man. What makes you so certain that they're going to kill him? Don't you see? Serrano was afraid only of the military. With the president in his power, he can nullify that threat. So you want us to suspend operations then, huh? Yes, Mr. Nelson. I'd like to help if I can. Can I help in some way? What can you do? Well, I'd be able to dream up something. Try and stall him off for a while longer, huh? Until noon. Till noon? What do you mean? 
Well, if you haven't heard from us by then, you probably never will. Fort. This is Bruno 2, emergency. Come in, Baranca Fort. Baranca Fort. Come in, Baranca Fort. Bruno 2, go ahead. General, listen closely. I haven't much time. An underwater attempt will be made to uh, free Duran. I will be with the invading party. You keep a, uh, a boat circling the fort. Now, you look for a signal from me. The What are you doing, Villegas? Trying to get some news. What's it to you? I thought maybe I'd find out how your friend Serrano is doing. All right, let's get started, huh? guarded at every point of access. Patrol boats swept the waters offshore. It was a long swim underwater even for experienced men. When we reached the area of the island, I took the boys down all the way. From now on, we have to play for the big chips, silent and deep. One deep channel through the reefs. Our charts marked it clearly. The patrol boats were thick. I decided to give them something to think about. Indio got my message. He released a time-fused bomb on a marker boy. possible. Get us! What is wrong? Land for me! The boat, Excellency, torpedo! Command idiots is my cross. Mike Nelson is an extraordinary man. Uh, well, soon he will be an extraordinary dead man. Should Villagas not be able to signal me, I have yet another surprise for your, your underwater commandos. Across that channel is a screen, a concrete and steel screen, which they could not possibly know about. <laughs> The screen gave me a jolt. If I tried to blow it, the explosion would bring the patrol boats right to us. Yet we had to get through. I left Tomas with some special orders. be no trouble to blow, but unless Tomas did as I had instructed him, we'd be in deep trouble. Tomas
Ross carried out my orders. He planted a timed charge some distance from the screen. charge at the screen was time fused. Indio and I had still another one to plant. We sent this one to the surface. Our objective was to create so many explosions that the defenses would be thoroughly confused. of other explosions had gotten us safely through the screen. But now I came face to face with an unexpected surprise. We were within sight of the seawall at the island when Tomas suddenly swam out ahead of us. I was caught completely off guard by his move. I couldn't figure out what he had in mind. I saw Tomas with a very pistol. I knew what he was up to. One of my boys was a serenista, all right, but it wasn't the one that I'd expected. Tomas had planned to signal the defenses with his flare pistol. We gave them a better signal than that. We tied Tomas up on a raft and lit a smoke bomb. They could see that all right. And while they were busy trying to figure it out, we would be somewhere else. headed underwater for the other side of the island.
did the trick, huh? Yeah. You keep busy here now. I'll get into the fort. I'm keeping busy, all right. Did you get the Presidente? How will you hold him? He's only human. I have an entire company of soldiers. You may need them all. All right, Serrano, you're through. Don't do that. Get on that radio and tell your men to cease fire. Serrano, I'm a peaceful man, but it wouldn't take much for me to shoot a guy like you. Call off the revolver, you're a dead man. I'll count to five. One, two, three. Is this Serrano? It's been said a lot of different ways by many men smarter than I. But I guess it still goes. You can't tell a man by the way he smiles. They voted me a medal, my first foreign decoration. And they made Indio Ramirez head of a vigorous new program of underwater coastal defense. That was the real decoration. Hi there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is certainly a lot of fun, and it's full of adventure. See some more of it again next week, huh? When there'll be another excursion into that fabulous underwater world of Sea Hunt. <laughs>